James Hugh Moss, was born on June 23, 1897, into a large family headed by a farmer named Robert Moss and his wife Jenny. The family first appears in the 1900 census living in Polk County, Tennessee, with the young James listed as Hubert Moss. It's possible that Jim Hugh was a southern style nickname for James Hubert. By the 1910 census the family had moved to Etowah in adjacent McMine County. By 1918 Jim Moss was married, and by 1920 he and his wife Bertie had two children. Moss registered for the draft in Etowah in August 1918, and was living there when the 1920 census was taken. Around this time he worked for the Louisville and Nashville Railroad. None of these particulars made it into any newspaper coverage I've seen of the Osborne murder, the trials, or the executions. There's little about Moss's character or any personal details about him, other than Eula Thompson's intriguing description of him as a black man who talks like a white man and the Atlanta Constitution's account of his demeanor before his execution. The threesome of Moss, Thompson, and Thompson's wife Eula, were prohibition bootleggers from Etowah, in eastern Tennessee. A year before almost to the day, they had rolled up with a car full of moonshine whiskey to a general store in Chatsworth, Georgia, 45 miles away. Although it was after hours they were able to rouse the shopkeep Coleman Osborne. Some kind of argument ensued, and Osborne was shot dead. Not much is known about Moss as a ball player. The newspaper accounts of the crime he was put to death for mention his past playing history, but only in passing. The recent influx of black leagues information at baseball reference also isn't much help, but even that is admittedly incomplete. Some sites mention an entry of Moss in James Riley's biographical encyclopedia of the baseball leagues. The Moss in the encyclopedia pitched for the Chicago American Giants in 1918. It's impossible to say if the ball player referenced is James Hugh Moss. But we do know the sad story of how Moss's life ended, even if the circumstances that led to it are very questionable. As it stands, Moss was convicted, along with Clifford Thompson and his wife Eula Mae Thompson, for the murder of Coleman Osborne. It seems that the three murderers, conspirators were in the bootlegging business to some degree. One night, they stopped the car they were using to hold a whiskey near Osborne's home. Someone met Osborne at the door of his general store, there was some shouting, and Osborne was shot dead. The court found the three bootleggers guilty and ordered them to death by electric chair. The two men were to be executed first, but, on the eve of the execution, Eula May apparently had a change of heart and came forward with a new story. While awaiting her own execution, Eula May called in the jailer and made a statement. In it, she claimed that the murdered man had learned of an affair she was having with one B.W. Swan and that she and Swan plotted the murder. They decided to frame the death on her husband thereby clearing out any obstacles to their affair. Moss, in this story, was the victim of very bad luck. Upon hearing this confession, Georgia Governor L.G. Hardman went on a personal investigation of her story, as he decided what to do with the information. After delaying his final decision for an hour, Hardman decided that the information did not warrant a respite and allowed the execution to go on as scheduled. Clifford Thompson and James Humas were executed later that afternoon on August 11, 1928. A few weeks later, 
As Eula May continued to await her fate, she came forward with yet another confession. This time, the story of an affair with Swan, a prominent farmer, as it turned out, was gone. Instead, she claimed that the three of them had stopped late at night near Osborne's store, and that Moss went alone to his door for gasoline. When Osborne refused to give Moss his change, the two got in an argument and Moss eventually shot Osborne. Moss had changed from a man she didn't even know in the first story into the man solely responsible for Osborne's death. In September 1928, on the eve of her own execution, Governor Hartman gave Eula May a 60-day reprieve in order to more fully explore the details. There doesn't seem to be any direct mention of the death sentence being commuted to one of life but... By November 1928, newspapers were reporting on the impending marriage of lifer Eula Mae Thompson as she awaits transportation to the state prison to begin a life sentence. Dan C. Harrison, an Atlanta butcher, had fallen in love with her upon seeing her sad state when she was first sent to prison and had, in the meantime, spent much money in helping mound her defense. They were planning to marry that November. In the end, little is known about exactly what happened to cause the execution of Clifford Thompson and James Hugh Moss. Did Moss and his companions really kill Coleman Osborne over a simple argument during a bootlegging run? Was Eula May Thompson actually telling the truth in her first confession, giving us proof of the execution of two innocent men? Was she even telling the truth in her second confession? No matter the circumstances, it was a sad end for the former black leaguer James Hugh Moss. Gov. J.B. Hardman turned to phrenology as an aid in determining whether or not clemency should be extended to a woman awaiting death in the electric chair. Governor Hartman announced recently that the phrenology of Clifford Thompson, the woman's husband, and Jim Hugh Moss, electrocuted for the murder of Osborne, played a part in his decision not to interfere in their cases. Governor Hardman is a physician. Eula was paroled from the life sentence in 1936. Five years later, Eula May and two other men were jailed in the death of Walker L. Rod, Eula May's brother. Walker was stabbed to death after an argument. If Eula May's original confession had any truth to it, and considering that it was made out of a guilty conscience and with no lawyers present. I tend to believe it did, it goes to show just how hard of luck James Humas was. In her confession, she claimed that she didn't even know Humas was and that it was a different black man, Jim Lowry, who helped with the murder. If true, Moss was wrongly convicted for the murder and when given a chance at freedom, the governor, a physician no less, decided against the evidence based on the flimsiest of pseudosciences. A sad story indeed. Thank you for watching Death Row.